When I looked at his website, it was clear that Michael Wheatley indeed knew his stuff. The photos on his website were very impressive and covered a wide range of subjects. Kelly Second called up memories of Michael, who in fact was a past member <clears throat> of the Vancouver Natural History Society. After attending botany nights and summer camps over several years in the 1990s, Michael left and soon became a professional photographer. Committee member Phil Edgel also remembered Michael and offered to contact him. To our delight and my great relief, Michael graciously accepted to both critique the photos and serve as our presenter tonight. The bio on his website simply says, <clears throat> I was born in Sheffield, England and came to Canada when I was 12. I have been composing photographs since I was 18 and have been a full-time photographer for over 20 years. I pay particular attention to the design and quality of light in my images. I take regular tea breaks. Please welcome Michael Wheatley. Thank you, Teresa. Please forgive me for sitting down, but I, I'm a bit fidgety, so I, without a lectern to lean on, I figured it was better this way. Um, indeed, uh, my first photograph ever published was on the cover of Discovery 30 something years ago. So I started with the VNHS, then now Nature Vancouver. As Teresa mentioned, it's not a competition this year. So the, the, the five pictures in each category that I picked to talk about are not necessarily what I think are the best pictures, but the, they're just the ones I chose to talk about. So mostly the ones I really like. So I won't be saying too many bad things about them, but uh, no, there'll be a few tips along the way. But uh, there's a great number of really excellent images that I won't be talking about. But you know, if you really do have a question, you, you could yell it out. But otherwise, I'll keep quiet about them. Oh yeah, we will have a question period at the end. If I go too fast on anything, you want to go back, you could yell that, that out. So these images are from away, which I believe is any, anywhere other than BC and uh, Washington. And I'm not sure of the exact uh, terminology, but things that weren't close by. You take on a trip. What is that? It's a blur of, of some kind of light. It's, uh, you know, it means something to the photographer. And that's what's important about photography, that people enjoy taking pictures and... So this is the first Im image I chose to talk about. 
obviously very interesting photogenic birds and uh, great exposure, good separation from the background. My only critique of, of this one is I'm not crazy about the composition. It's very empty in the middle, but if it was in a magazine, there's a double page spread with text in those empty spaces, it would be great. So, so you know, pictures have different purposes, but I think for myself, I would like more room around, around these to, to maybe improve the dynamics of the composition. So the, the emptiness in the middle, I, I think lets it down. Like if you wanted it as a print on the wall, I, I think it wouldn't work very good because of that, that reason being empty in the middle, but otherwise it's a lovely image. And obviously great color. Uh, uh, this, I think, is a great image. We, we, I think it's probably just a play fight, but, uh, you know, it says serious fight in the title there, so I, I, I don't know much about polar bears. I've never seen, seen them in a while myself, but uh, I think it's great that we can see the teeth bared and, and, and it's all very sharp and the e excellent exposure, separation from the background. There's, there's nothing you could, I could see wrong at all with this picture. It's just a really well taken, an excellent image. Uh, this image intrigues. I'm, I'm, I'm really attracted to red. If you, if you saw my picture, you see red is very important uh, in the pictures I take because it's eye catching and you know helps uh, sell pictures. Um, this is such an interesting creature that uh, you know I think it works for that reason. But it's also uh, the, the focus is is on the eyes and the important part of the creature. And but just the interesting colors, the, the little bits of blue, just you know in that red are really quite lovely. I mean, there are some highlights in the front, but you know, they're, they're exposed properly and, and there's nothing really too distracting. It's and just nicely framed. So I think it's a great shot, especially with the challenge of being underwater, I'm sure it made it a bit more difficult. Throughout the images tonight, I, I noticed there's very few images taken at sunrise and sunset. This, but, uh, you know, that time of day is, 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 you know, adds its own atmosphere and, and can really make pictures uh, very interesting and, and dynamic. Uh, this exotic location adds even more uh, interest to the image because most of us will never see these kind of trees. Uh, it's, I really like the composition, but, but unfortunately, in this competition, there's been a variety of cameras used from phones, to even I think some pictures have been pulled from video cameras. So there's a range of quality, uh, technical qualities of, of the images. So, so when I was looking at them, I didn't, uh, I didn't really look at the specs. So I, I, I'm not really judging on, you know, how, how good your lens is and or things like that. But this one is definitely not sharp, so it really lets it down. So otherwise, it's a really excellent image. But you know, the black silhouette you'd expect to be a bit more crisp and punchy. Uh, so uh, that's probably either a, a feature of the, the, the camera that, that was used, or it could be that there was a little bit of movement, but you know, these days, most cameras are very stable and automatic, and it, it's, it's easy to get sharp pictures under most conditions, but unfortunately that it's let down a bit by not being sharp. It's a, a lovely image, uh, nonetheless. That's fairly typical of me. I'm a pretty careless photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Trees, and I thought they were so amazing. Yeah, I know it's, it is amazing. I mean, I'd, I'd love to be there, but uh, Namibia, I presume, yeah, it says so on top. Um, but Ron Long took us on that trip. Well, that's what you were very fortunate. 12 photographers from here. Oh, good. Yeah, I know it's, it's well, I really like the composition, and uh, it's just if it was sharper, it would be obviously it would much, have, uh, even that much, much more impact. Although it's really not that important if you take images that please yourself, bring back memories. You, there, oh, oh, throughout history, there've been some great photographs that are not sharp or technically perfect, but it's 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 the the way they make you feel sometimes is more important. But uh, as a professional photographer, I, you know, if I send an image to an agency that's not sharp, it's going to get rejected no matter how good it is otherwise, unless unless it has historical value or something. So it's just something to keep in mind. Try to get technically better if you can, if you can see a reason, uh, a way to get there. 
the, uh, this image I really like. It's a bird I'm not familiar with. And uh, I, you know, it's really, with modern technology, uh, autofocus and the, the way cameras can track these days, it's much easier to get this kind of picture than before. So, uh, but still it doesn't, doesn't take anything away from the picture. It's just, I, I kind of, I just love it. Except for the pelican on top, I, I find distracting. So I think <laughs> cropping it, cropping it down would improve improve the comp visually the composition. Uh, I don't mind that the wings are cut off on the other side, but I think cropping that pelican away uh, would improve the the composition. There's also uh, something on the edge here, the bottom edge. You can just nip that off too slightly. Uh, when I'm dealing with pictures, especially with the high resolution cameras, you just have so much flexibility with cropping that you can do that later. You don't, in a situation like this, you don't have to really worry about it when you're taking the picture, but you have to see something later that it's easier to fix with most uh, most software that, that, you, that you use. I've camped at that lake a couple of times. Yeah, I don't recognize where this meadow is, but it's a lovely meadow. Oops, excuse me.
Uh, this image is something I like to do a lot to, to photograph bare trees. I mean, they're, they're just often so lovely all by themselves. Here we have two trees, another tree coming in at the top, but that doesn't bother me. But uh, when I do this kind of picture, I'm, I'm, I enjoy the contrast of the light and dark. It doesn't really matter what the, if the sky is kind of white because the branches are so dark and it, depending on how you expose for it, you can make a strong silhouette. But this image, I think if I was, if I was able to play with it, I would push the contrast a bit more to make the, 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 the light areas even lighter. And I think it would have a bit more punch. But, but also one, one thing I like to do with images is, is have something extra in them. So I think, you know, something you could do with an image like this is wait for a bird to fly in the, in the open space up, up at the top and that, that would just give it something extra. If you had a, a silhouetted gull or crow, you know, with wings, wings uh, spread, that would just give it a little bit extra. And I think with all, all the pictures that you take, if, if, you're, if you take your time, Many times there's something extra that you can add that might maybe it's just adding some foreground of flowers or, or what have you, so you can get some depth into your picture. This picture doesn't need depth. I think the, the second tree up top is giving a bit of depth and making it more interesting. But yeah, but you can always look, look for something else to add some oomph. And I think, it, you know, birds are, are, you know, they're, they're always flying by. So if you time things right, eventually, one will go in, in a place uh, that you'd like it and make your picture a little bit better. This is a conditions I've encountered a lot in the last few years because of the forest fires. It looks like it's possibly under a forest fire sky. But, and the advantage of that is it gives kind of a nice a soft light, but it, but it gives you a really ugly sky generally. And so you want to do what the person has done here and, and crop out the sky. And that, that really does help. Uh, because that light otherwise can, can be interesting. Uh, this image is it's very busy, but I, I just I like the mood of it. it, it it's uh, it gives you a sense of what walking down this path in in, in the in the country is is like. Once again, is you know that there are a few things that are distracting. Uh, mainly, I, I find the telephone pole in, on the, the left there is. You know, could easily be cropped out, and I think the picture would be much improved mm -hmm. by getting rid of that. I don't mind the out of focus flowers in the front, uh, add some depth, and, and because they are weedy flowers, I don't mind that either. Because this is, uh, you know, this is the way these kind of places are. I, I think it, it has a really nice mood, though. So I enjoyed the image for, for, for all those reasons, even though, you know, it's not definitely not a competition winner, but it has a lot going for it. Smoky skies again, and normally you want to avoid the sky, but there's always an exception to every rule. When you have a red sun, you should photograph that red sun because, I mean, they don't come along all the time and it's, and the forest fires are, they're creating lots of problems, but for photographers, if it gives you a red sun, hey, that's, that's a bonus. Do what you can with it. This is a, a nice composition down at Ambleside. Uh, Next time we have a red sun, I'll think of going to Ambleside to, 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 to line it up with a welcoming figure. I, I, I did the red sun in English Bay in, in the, a couple of years ago, and I, I, did, I put the red sun at the, the peak of a Motop pyramid in Edmonton. But you know, you have to put it with something. It's like a full moon. You, you need to put that sun with something. A, a red sun is like it's special. Uh, a long, the longest lens. Lens was used here, it says 200 millimeter, uh, but the, per, the photographer was quite far away. But I think you get even more impactful image if, if you got a bit closer, got low down as, as the sun came down lower, maybe getting the, the sun and the silhouette of the welcoming figure closer together to get a different kind of picture of, uh, you know, a more impact. Well, this, this set the scene and it's very well balanced with the people and the buildings. I think, uh, you know, Zooming in on the welcoming figure and, and the sun closer together would be probably an even better image or more impactful anyway. But this is a lovely image under difficult circumstances. As a calendar photographer, I look for scenes like this all the time. I want to, an image where there's a foreground, middle ground, and background. Uh, so, and generally, water 
if you look at any of my calendars, you'll see at least half the images have water in, but probably more than half. Uh, so I'm always using lakes, rivers, and the ocean in, in my images. Uh, that, that just makes them make, makes them generally more interesting. I also look for leading lines. Uh, the downside to this image is, is that we have a leading line on the right here, but it's not it's leading us out of the frame. So so that's you know it lets it down somewhat. The, the submerged branches and trees are really lovely, and I, I'm, I enjoy seeing them, especially with the, the reflection of the clouds. So there's so much going for, for this image, even the, the, the middle ground with the little tiny little bits of moss and the little island there. It's, it's, it's got so much going for it. If possible, it would be nice to, to move the, this main leading log to, to the left hand side to lead you into the frame and that would have strengthened your image. There was an image earlier where we, showed, we saw the trail, a, a, a wooden path, maybe a bit of a bridge was a leading line into a picture. Leading lines into pictures, uh, it's another element that strengthens, uh, strengthens the picture. Um, this is still a lovely picture, but I, and I think you could still, you could crop off this bright a part of this, uh, this log going to the right. And, and you still you still have a great picture, still have most of the, the foreground, and then it wouldn't be leading you out of the frame. So I think it would be improved by cropping up just below that uh, that, that submerged log to get away, get rid of the bright part. The, the the exposure is great. It's not no, it's not too bright, but it's just going the wrong direction. It's, I don't think it's helping uh, the frame at all. This. I think it's a great image. It's got a lot of texture, a lot of things to, to discover. Uh, the colors are, are very harmonious. Uh, and often the background we see, we see mountains. Uh, I just find it a, a great image um, and, and very sharp all the way through. I don't know what kind of camera we use. It says 4.3 millimeter here, so I'm, I'm, I have no idea what kind of camera to use, but a really good job of done it at ISO 32. It says that uh, 1.8, I, I, you know, it kind of doesn't make sense to me, but it's got a, a lot going for it. I, I find it really, really uh, enjoyable to look at. This one we don't have a waiver, so we, we, we cannot show the whole picture. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice the humor of that when I saw it small on my screen at home. <laughs> and I apologize to the Zoom audience for, for not looking at the camera, but I'm enjoying looking at the pictures larger. But, so I'm going to keep doing it this way. Back of my head uh, is probably b better looking anyway. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> so this is the first one I'm talking about, and obviously it's uh, very whimsical. The, the fact that her eyes are trying to see the chickadee is uh, that's what makes it. And it's a great exposure. I mean, modern cameras, um, they do a great job. But that, the blown highlights in the corner are, are not bothering me at all, and they're, they're kind of balanced by the, the white of the jacket. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's getting right, right to the point and showing something that's fun. So it really works on that level. I think this is a great image, and I really like that the eyes of the, the, the probably, a, I think it's a boy, but uh, have been cut off because that's not, not what's important. And, and uh, it's mostly, it, it's not quite sharp on the, on the grasshopper or cricket's head, but it's, uh, you know, still a great image. It's, more, it's sharp enough and, and really well, well balanced and composed. It may have been cropped after the fact, but it's been really well done. So it's, I, I can really find nothing uh, bad about it at all. It's, it's, it's an excellent image. And it's great that you, you, somebody's sharing nature with the, a younger one. This one too, I'm, I'm amazed at the dynamic range. We have some light coming across the path here, but it's, uh, and it's, like it, it's, it's almost blown out, but it's not. So there's so much detail. It's also a really good comp composition, and the blue of the jacket is, you know, just stands out against uh, the, gr the greens and yellows. Uh, I, I, I find it a, a lovely image, and the, uh, the, a bit of a leading line too, that's kind of leading us past the child, but it, it's all part of the great composition. It's just a really well taken image. And this is a really fun image. So, I mean, normally when I take pictures of people, I don't like them having that, but sometimes it really works, but, you know, so it really adds to the image here. Uh, one thing I would say about, about it, though, I think, because the sky is more interesting up above where the people are, I think taking it as a vertical would be even more sky, and cropping out the, the far left there, you could probably get a more dynamic, a compositionally uh, image. Uh, so it's worthwhile uh, turning your camera vertical sometimes. Uh, you can always take both kinds and, and judge later. But yeah, I think that would make it even more fun, uh, longer, and, and bring you to, to the people. Uh, and and then breaking the rules uh, here, the people are out of focus. But uh, they're very well placed, and if you look closely, you'll see that the three sharpest flowers are kind of framing where these people are. And uh, I really like that about it. It's, it's got a crappy sky, but it doesn't matter in this image. It's, it's, it's been well handled. Even though the sky is the largest thing there, the composition is, has been so deftly handled that uh, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I'm sure I prefer it nice, nicer skies, but it's out of focus. People are out of focus. But they're definitely, that's where your eye goes. It's, it was intentional, and I really like that about this image. We'll break the rules whenever you think that they work.
This is the first one I'm talking about in Bosnia. Um, a great group of Jensen's, you know, perfectly enclosed within the frame. It's pretty much all the flowers in the shop. And even though it's very busy with lots of leaves and stuff around it, it's still, it's very cohesive. So I really like, really like, like the image. 
Uh, it's not a flower you see every day. It's very specific to habitat and always lovely to discover. So for me, it brings back memories of find, finding uh, this kind of flower. I'm sure that the person who took it has fond memories of, of the height that they, that they took. And that's uh, part of the power of photographs. They can take you back to places you were a long time ago. And uh, I think that this, that, that's what this kind of image is, is really good for. It. Really well taken, great exposure, great color, uh, lovely image. This image intrigues me. I, I, I can't really figure out if something has been done to it digitally or if it's just the, the, the way that extreme contrast was with the, 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 the light, but uh, it really works. I find it really well balanced, even though the grayness of the, some of those uh, upper side of the leaves doesn't seem right. It could possibly the, be the way it looked or, or the way the camera recorded it, or maybe it was they were too bright and somebody and the person uh, tried to you know bring them into, into line later i don't know but it's it's really well, well balanced i love the pink i love the composition and i find that it works it doesn't really matter if it was uh modified uh, because it works uh, you know i've waded into lakes myself to to, to take pictures of, of this kind of lily there's a, a lake in Salmon Arm that has a whole bunch of them, and I've been in there uh, a couple of times trying to get a, a good picture. This is with a longer lens, but I, I've gone in with my wide angle and got up close, but it's a bit a bit uh, iffy because if it gets deep all of a sudden, you might dunk your camera, and cameras are really expensive. <laughs> I dunked my very first camera, Nick and Matt, in a in a at the Sandcastle competition in in Parksville uh, one year because as the tide came in I, I went out to, to get the tide coming in on the sandcastles and some kids must have made a dug a deep hole and I didn't know it was there <laughs> I, I stepped in it that was the end of that camera this is a lovely image uh, great separation from the background great exposure and the icing on the cake is is the it's the dew. It's something extra. It will be, will be a lovely image without the dew, but the dew is the something extra that's making it, making this uh, even better than it, than it would have been. Uh, there, there's an, another branch coming in at the bottom left that's a little bit distracting, and uh, the one, the other one that's kind of going through the more near the middle is, is more out of focus, and that doesn't bother me. But because uh, the one on the left is the same color. And this is, it's at odds with this one. It's mildly distracting, but still, it's an excellent image. Uh, well seen, well taken. This is one of my favorite images in the collection. I, it's like this is the way nature is. It, it's, it's busy, but the photographers have made an excellent composition. And I'm glad that they. They probably didn't inter inter interfere with the scene. It's the way they found it, and they could see the beauty in it. Uh, the red uh, berry is a focal point for me. Yeah. My eye goes there. I'm really attracted to red, but but I find the whole design of the image really really nice. It it falls off the sharpness of the back, but it, it, that's not in, not a problem because all of the main fungus is, is sharp, and it only falls off after that. And just there's lots to discover you. I can go around and see different things, and and the, there are a couple of oranges and yellows, and but it, it, just all natural colors and natural beauty. Not everybody would see the beauty in uh, some some old uh, fungi, but I mean to me it's beautiful. We've had very few images taken at sunrise or sunset with that really nice warm light. Uh, this is uh, one of them and used to excellent effect and also excellent use of the lens to get separation from the background and then the photographers lined the, the camera back perpendicular to, to this grass or reed and it's you know everything is, is sharp it needs to be sharp and the light is beautiful it's just a lovely image simple but very effective I, I used to take lots of images like this when I was doing a lot more nature photography. Uh, this is the way to take flowers and grass and even insects. It's just uh, a lovely time of day to take pictures. And if you're careful, 
you can get great images. Having the right lenses helps also. A macro lens is good for this kind of photography. <laughs> yeah, so this is a great shot. It's got many, many things going for it, uh, but a frame within a frame is often a, a really good device, and it's definitely got that with it. And we have circles and squares, and you know, wet and dry. All we've got lots of things, but obviously the main thing is uh, it's probably a mink, I guess, in the, in the, in the middle. Uh, to, to nitpick, nitpick a little, I, you know, I see the the, the, the photographer use a high shutter speed and uh, and not 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 a very uh, stop down aperture. I, I I think I don't know how much time he had to take the picture, but I think he could have got away with a slower shutter speed and used more depth of field, and then I think it would be even better if if the, the far up rocks were sharp too but uh, that's a minor thing still an excellent picture uh, it's a little bit bright also on the left left hand side you know if you have access to the right software i mean a graduated uh, filter pulled across you could you could uh, you know bring the brightness down a little and uh, maybe add get add a bit more clarity to get more texture out of it but you know still excellent image uh, reminds me of a uh, a weasel shot I did once that kept popping out of a wood pile. Actually, on a, a BNHS uh, or Nature Vancouver camp many, many years ago. And it was, it was very hard with manual focus to get the picture. Obviously, these days with autofocus, much easier to get an image. And this it doesn't take away from this. It's a great image to capture 
an animal with, with uh, some prey, it tells a story. Uh, images that tell a story are, are often the best images, so that's why this is a, a great image. I find this to be a lovely image, and it's well. There's no, no so kind of all the tentacles are kind of leading you into into the center, and it's, it's interesting that the center is so much different from the outside tentacles. I, I really love that. So it's, it's really tight on the on, on the creature. Nothing extraneous there. It's uh, got beautiful colors, beautiful exposure. It's just a lovely image. I don't. I can't see anything at all wrong with it. I like this image. I mean, I myself, I don't think I've seen deer on the beach. So to me, I like it just for that reason, to, to remind me that they're in different habitats. And this, this uh, out of focus uh, bit of tree on the right doesn't bother me because it's so out of focus and it's different colors and it actually, I think, adds a bit of interest. It, it kind of makes it uh, less flat, I think. Maybe it's adding a bit of depth. depth. And I also like that the, the doe is looking one way and, and the bucks are looking in a different way. So it's got that movement. So your eyes moving across this way and kind of the rocks are also kind of leading that way too. So it, it's, it's kind of interesting. So the deer was, just, you know, something caught the deer's attention. It's, it's looking out there. That's so that's kind of the story. So I like it because there's a bit of a story and well, well designed. Now we're very lucky to have this kind of scene in our backyard. My, my grandson just went to Vancouver Island yesterday and I heard that they saw some whales off from Union Bay. So they were, they were lucky. Um, I, I obviously, it's great that the photographer got the, the whale br uh, breaching like this. And uh, but uh, another thing I really like about this image, I mean, it's well composed, great comp composition, but also the the bare rock in the background to, to me mirrors the, the the angle of the of, of the whale, the way it's going that direction. So I thought that was an extra little thing that made this picture better than possibly the uh, the other whale picture we saw before. I, I did once see a humpback breach myself. It was a sunset at Long Beach, and I, I only had a short lens on. I, 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 I changed lenses to, to my 200, which is about the longest I, I generally carry, and uh, but it never it never came up again. So, <laughs> but now uh, generally I carry two cameras, one one wide zoom and one 70 to 200. So I'm, I'm usually ready for most things. We've seen a couple of really nice frog pictures before now, but uh, out of the frog pictures, this is my favorite. It's got so much going for it. I mean, um, the colors of greens and yellows unifying it, but also the, the, the lovely angle of the fern and, and, and the, the mirroring angles on the, on the frog's uh, uh, pattern. But also, um, we've got shadows on the ferns here, and you see that these these markings on the frog, you can see that you know how they would blend in. It's just natural uh, coloration, uh, so it hit. Well, we can see it really well, but you know, oftentimes they become almost invisible because of the of the natural camouflage and coloration and, and the way they, they blend in. And creatures, could, uh, so so many creatures that rely on camouflage really blend blend in. Uh, just amazingly, and I think some of them on, on the fly they change colors. I know once I, I found a prey mantis in a suyas, and I, 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 I caught it in a little box, and then I, I let it go at the campsite at Haynes Point, and it immediately went to some grass and became like very hard. To, if you didn't know it was there, it just was blending in with the grass, and its position looked, looked, looked like a bicolored leaf. Oh, a lovely image. No, I could I couldn't find any anything at all negative about this image at all. Just a, a lovely image.
I think this is the only spider in the insects and spiders. <laughs> insects have been a lot more powerful. When I first started taking pictures, I was, I think Al Grass called me Spider-Man. I was taking lots of spider pictures. Lots of great bee pictures. This was one of my favorite. We got the red and green complementary colors. Always, always uh, punchy. I and I also like that that, that uh, grass in the background or horsetail or whatever it is has got the same angle as the the, the bee's wing. So once again, a diagonal, diagonal, strengthening the image. Out of focus background, nice and smooth. Complementary. The B is mostly sharp all the way through, so it's it's a, a great image. Well done. Another great great image. Just the, the yellows and the, and the way the wasp uh, blends in is, is is wonderful. Also, there's a bit of a diagonal too, very similar to the last one in in in, in its uh, in its strengths. But totally lovely image. Doesn't matter that the wing is not sharp. This is more of a habitat image, and I really like that too. I like to see animals in their habitat. So 
often, you know, a close-up sometimes, uh, you know, while it may have the impact of being close-up, it, it doesn't tell the story as, as much as a, a wider shot. So this is well handled. Uh, it, while it is very really bright on the rocks in the background, they are out of focus. So these uh, less than an empty seed heads uh, stand out and uh, the Valeria uh, and the, the butterfly is well placed and because of its coloration uh, stands out also. So while it is a bit busy, to me it's a lovely shot and, and I'm sure brings back lots of great memories of that day. Uh, this is my absolute favorite shot of all of the pictures we're going to see tonight. It's just, you know, it's got, I mean, I love flowers, I, I, I pink flowers especially, but you know, that strange looking creature peeking out that you discover and just so well placed in the frame. And then to top it off, we have all this beautiful dew surrounding everything, you know. Okay, so um, I, I guess it was not as disruptive to everybody else, just to me. So we're starting over again. I and mean, we're continuing with the program. Excuse me while I finish chewing my cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I really like about this image is I, I think it's a reflection of one of the legs. It's got like an iridescence on it. Um, so finding that little detail. I, I find quite lovely. Well, I mean, it's very sharp. It's just, it's, I'm sure it's probably one of the better water strider, strider images uh, taken by anyone. It's just, it really works for me. And the, the surface tension uh, illustrated by, you know, the dark areas there. I mean, it's just got a, a lot of a lot of things going for it and, and tells a story, especially if you understand uh, water striders. So this is the last category, birds, and it got the most entries, I think. There's a lot of great bird pictures. And I did, I'm not necessarily talking about the best ones, although I think 
I'm talking about a couple of the best ones, but there's lots of great books. I like the abstraction of the reflection. I have actually seen pelicans in BC. They're obviously a lot more common in Alberta. But, uh, need to see them in BC.
This is the first one I'm talking about. I, I really like the painfully look of this image. So it, while there's a real mess of branches there, the, the, the bird is well placed, the colors of the berries are complementary to the colors on the, the bird's head. And the, the fact that it's, you know, kind of soft all around, I think adds to it. I think if it was sharp, if everything was sharp, it would still be a great image, but I think just more painfully because of the softness and uh, and the excellent composition. So another one of my favorite images. And this is a uh, modern technology and a very patient photographer probably. Still takes a lot of skill to take a, an image like this, but uh, modern technology makes it easy to do with stabilization of lenses and cameras and focus tracking and all kinds of uh, improvements over the old days when we had, we had to manually focus. But uh, uh, the exposure, everything's excellent. And what I really love about it is the background because it's probably a tree in the background that's out of focus, but it's picking up the same kind of browns that are on the pintails. Another thing I really love about it is that there's three of them, not just two. The fact there's three makes it even more dynamic. The three is always a great number in an image. Uh, odd numbers generally produce uh, a nicer, more pleasing images than, 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 than pairs. If you have a pair, sometimes it's once tall, once short, that works too. So it's like one and a half. But uh, three, three is always great. Excellent image. You know, if I was if I was picking best in show, I would have had, I would have, uh, you know, be tossing and turning over this one, uh, uh, or that lovely little uh, lily with the dragonfly uh, in. So my two favorite images, I think, are those. This image tells a story. That's what's uh, excellent about this. A great detail on the on the crow. Uh, excellent exposure. I think there's a uh, some lens issues maybe here on this on on the right but, but, uh, but not a problem at all sometimes the purple fringing or chromatic aberration but i'm not sure if it is that it just it's going very purple there so it could be it could be a lens issue but uh, it's great it tells the story the bird is, is taking the fruit i think 
And I would like to see a bit more space underneath. It looks like maybe it's been cropped, but I don't know what was there that the photographer cropped out, so maybe it was important to crop something out. So the excellent image tells a story. Uh, telling a story is, is very important. This one also tells a story, and it's an amazing image. I think the photographer might have been lying down, so it's got that dramatic uh, wave coming in the background, even though it's out of focus, we can see it's the wave. And uh, just the angle of view can often improve an image. So if you're standing up and shooting down on it, it would have the same impact. So a bit of a, you know, more depth is happening too, with the out of focus stand and, and receding and the, the, the shorebird, shorebird is, uh, is sharp and the, the crab, whether it's dead or alive, is, uh, you know, as part of the story, it's a great story, great composition, great, great uh, photo. Another favorite. This is the last. This is the last photo, and uh, it, it's uh, you know great that the photographer found a hummingbird nest. I mean, they're so small and hard to find. Uh, the the, the mixed lighting, you know, lets down the image a little bit. Some of it can be cropped out later. Obviously, when you're taking this kind of image, you don't want to intrude on the bird too much. And it's not telling us what, what kind of lens the, the photographer had. But uh, it brings up, you know, photographer's uh, ethics, whether, whether, you know, how much time she just, should you spend in the nest or, or any creature um, if, you're, if you're really close. I mean, some creatures are, are more bothered by human uh, presence th than others. Uh, it's hard to tell whether this hummingbird is, is showing uh, concern with the, the photographer. But, in, but you know, it's important if you take this kind of picture to not spend too much time uh, doing it and, uh, you know, take your picture and then, then move away. Anytime an animal shows distress, you probably should back up. But, I mean, long lenses help in, in this kind of situation. Uh, up maybe here it was a it was a, a wider lens, but uh, it's still it's a it's a great story, um, well found. The mixed lighting can be handled by it's, it's handled quite well, but I think the the top corner, the right corner, could be cropped out to improve the composition. <laughs> composition, uh, and it uh, that concludes uh, the images. If you have any questions about anything or want to ask me any questions, you you could do that. <coughs> but otherwise, that's the last image. <laughs> I just noticed this today. Very interesting to see the variety of cameras. So four from a camcorder. Oh. But on a high-end camcorder, you can get some very uh, high-quality images. Oh. And a lot more from a phone than I, than I realized.